Hello YouTube and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to use your camera in 3ds Max and how you can capture really cool depth of field photos just like so. So I'm going to bring this down and get rid of that and we are going to start from scratch. I know it's crazy. I posted another video. I have two videos up in like two weeks. Crazy. I'm really trying to post videos for you guys, so yeah. That aside, <coughs> we have a very simple setup here. I just have a backdrop. I have four staggered teapots. Just if you're wondering where they're at compared to the grid, that's how far away they are. This isn't really important, but if you want to copy this step for a step, this is how they're set up. I have a checker pattern on them, so that's where you can see them better and differentiate them. And then I just have a V-Ray Sun. If you really want to know uh, the settings on it, the intensity is set at 0.1, size is 10. There it is, top down, how it looks. That's not that important. That was literally just to get some light in the scene without overcomplicating it. Now we're going to create our own camera right now, so that way everything's normal. So we're going to zoom in, like wherever you want your camera to be. I'm going to say about right there. Now to create your camera, you do Control C. So if you hit Control C, you will create a camera on your scene. Now it already has a lot of my previous settings, so I'm going to put these back to what they normally are. Okay. Now, we're going to be going over your, your width, like the millimeter here, the focal length. The aperture, which is extremely important, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Now your ISO is not going to be on. To turn it on, click on this button, Exposure Control Installed. That will turn on this. It'll be set to something crazy like 64,000, I don't know. Just put it at 100 for a standard number. Now I know a lot of you are wondering why I'm making this considering back in my V-Ray realistic lighting tutorial, I do go over to camera. Well, I want to go into further depth on how to use a camera and how to properly use it and get that really nice depth of field. So your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are all going to work together to create a really nice image. Now, before we start, oops, let me make sure I have my camera selected. If you ever deselect your camera and you don't want to go out of your scene to reselect it, just go up to your top left-hand corner, click on your physical camera, and then click Select Camera. So now that we have that selected again, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do to get your nice depth of field is you want to enable depth of field. It's inside your physical camera properties tab. So enable depth of field. And now if you're wondering how do you get a more blurry background compared to the front, we're going to go over that. But beforehand, we need to make sure that your depth of field is set up correctly. So you're gonna to wanna to use your target distance. Not custom, just use target distance. Now if you push P and go to your perspective mode, and then you move around a little bit, your camera here, let me hide this, has two parts to it. It has this little square and you have your camera. Now this little square is going to be your target distance. So if we unhide our teapot, I have my target set for right where the teapot's at. Now, if you want your target to be, let's say, back here, you can move it back there as well. And when you render, the front is going to be more blurry, while this is going to be more in sight and clear. But we will get over that more once I get to it. So our focal distance is right at this first teapot. Now, if we go back to our camera again, here we go. And the first thing we're going to look at here is the aperture. Now, a 8 aperture is usually what 3ds Max has standardly set. To better explain this, let me bring over this image. Now, a 8 aperture right here is, you can see the camera lens is rather shut. It's extremely small. That's why it's usually a little bit darker when you have the 8 aperture, because the lens is much more shut. Now, if you look at f1.8, which a lot of photographers use for close photography to get that nice depth of field, the lens is completely open. So you're letting in all of this light. So if you have your set to 1.8, you're gonna get a very bright scene. 
but we will combat that with your ISO and shutter speed. Now, to better understand this a little bit further, F8, you get a little bit blurry background, not too much, whereas F1.4 or what I use 1.8, you're gonna get a very like blurred out depth of field background, and F22, you're not gonna get one as much. So if we move this back over now, come to our scene, let's just do a standard eight background. I mean, eight aperture, not eight background. You see, everything is all pretty clear. I mean, the back one is a little bit more blurry. As this renders a little bit, you'll start to see that more. It's a little bit blurry. So you do have your depth of field on. If you didn't have depth of field installed or clicked on, it would be just as clear and crisp as the front one. So this is just for a very mild depth of field. You know, just your standard shooting. So let's go ahead and cancel that. <clears throat> and let's go ahead, back to my camera. And let's bring this down to 1.8, like I was talking about, as you've seen in that photo. <clears throat> this is how we're gonna get that really nice depth of field. Now, when I render this, you're gonna see it's gonna be very bright. It's extremely, extremely blown out right now. And to combat that, you need to affect your shutter speed. Now, if you come down to your shutter, you have your type. I have one slash seconds because this is how a real life camera works. If you have a DSLR in real life, this is how camera is going to be set up using this setting. You do have these other ones, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using one slash seconds. Now the way this works is this one here is your second. That is equivalent to one second. This 100 is one hundredth of a second. So this is literally a fraction of one over one hundredth of a second. It's pretty quick. Now in real life I like to use 160 when I'm doing street photography because 160 is quick enough to where I can capture a walking person without it being fuzzy but it's not slow enough to where it's gonna cause any blurriness and not too quick to where I am because if you have it too quick, like let's say if you have this down to 500, you're going to be letting less light in because your lens is only open for 1 500th of a second. So not much light will be coming in. But 500 and like let's say 1000 is great for sporting events. If you're watching a basketball game or if you're trying to take a, photog like a, a photograph of a moving animal, 1,000th is pretty good because then it's not going to be open as long and it's going to capture that animal or whatever it is you're trying to capture. So as you can see here, if we had this at 160 and we took a photograph of a hummingbird, it'd be rather blurry. Whereas 1,000th, you would get the, you can see the actual wings of the bird and it'd be much quicker. <laughs> Basically to, uh, Ex explain that I guess. Um, I thought I had another image in here that went over that more. Um, maybe not. But you can see here though this is how a real camera works. So let's move this back over. Enough of that. So if you have a lower number here or a higher number, technically lower but a higher number here, you're going to be letting in far less light. So we had a lot of light in our scene, it was really blown out. So we want less light. So let's try 800th of a second. Let's see how that looks. Our scene looks a lot better now. You're seeing the gray texture of our backdrop and things look much, much better. Now back to our aperture setting here, 1 8th, you can see everything in the background is much more blurry. If you were to look at that compared to the f-stop of 8, where you can see this very clearly, you can see it's much, much different now. So if you're trying to get that really nice depth of field look, you're going to get that by using your f right here. So let's go ahead and cancel this. So let's say you, um, let's, let's keep this at 160, no, let's put this back at 800 actually. Uh, you need to know about your ISO. In real life, ISO is extremely important. In 3ds Max, it's not as important because you're doing a lot of still images usually. Most people do still images in 3ds Max. 
uh, com compared to moving objects. So let's say we're talking about a uh, still image. If you're doing a still image, you want to keep your ISO as low as possible. 100 is pretty standard, so you want to keep it at 100. That's going to give you a really nice uh, photo without having a lot of grain. Now, let's see if I can find a quick photo here. Here we go. You can see right here, ISO 100, you have a nice clear photo, whereas ISO 3200, you do not. It's very grainy. So you're asking, why would I ever want to use 3200? That makes no sense. Why would you ever want grain in your photo? Well, this is not all that ISO does. ISO also affects how much light is coming into your scene. So let's say this was very dark. Uh, let me quit clicking off the camera. It was really dark. Let's raise our aperture to like 16, something crazy to where our scene is very dark. So you have this very, very dark scene because our aperture is cranked way up. You're going to want to then crank up your ISO. So if it's at 100, let's say move it to 1600 it's gonna brighten your scene up, but you're also gonna cause more noise in your render. In real life, you would want to use uh, your ISO because sometimes you can't adjust your shutter speed. Because if you're trying to take a photo of a sporting event, you gotta have this at one thousandth of a second to capture that photo, and if that's not letting in enough light, you have to raise your ISO. So this is really important for when you're doing moving scenes. But since we don't have a moving scene, we can leave that at 100 and we can come in and just turn our shutter speed up. Let's just leave our shutter open because we don't have anything moving in our scene. So unless you're messing with moving objects, you're gonna wanna keep this at around 100. That's pretty standard. You're not gonna get very much noise. If there is any noise, it has to do with your settings that you have set up. So that goes over pretty much everything. You're gonna be using your shutter here to adjust your uh, the look of your scene, how much light is coming in. 160 is pretty standard, 100 ISO is standard. Then this is just however much depth of field that you want in your scene. Now you can even see 3ds Max kind of shows it off a little bit before we even render it out. It already looks fuzzy back there. I, I really hope you guys learned something from this. Um, I'm sorry I don't put out tutorials very often. It's really hard to always think of tutorials, but I figured this was a great tutorial. It goes over a lot of really useful stuff, shows you how to use depth of field. Um, I can even show you one more time, one more other thing here. If we take our camera here, and we take our pinpoint here, and let's say we move this all the way over to that teapot and we come back to our render and we render it now oh it's really really white hold on <laughs> let me uh adjust which one let's bring this up to 800 there we go you can see now that teapot back there is in focus whereas the one in front is not in focus you're getting a really blurred out image because we have our focal point set on that back teapot. I just wanted to show that off before the video, just in case you're curious about it. So that's our tutorial today on how to use the camera in 3ds Max. You're going to be using mostly your, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Those are the three settings you're going to want to affect the most. And yeah, I hope you learned something. If you did, please feel free to like the video if you did like it and it was helpful. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, I post videos rather sporadically, but I am trying to post them a little bit more often now. So I hope to see you around. I hope to hear from you guys. If you have any suggestions at all on what I should do for a video, please leave it in a comment. I will try to make a video on it, I promise. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good week. Bye.